it's time for you to make some coins. Today we take a look at pretty much all of the best money making methods I can think of at the moment in Hypixel Skyblock. So just because one of the methods might not work for you, the likelihood is with about 15 different money making methods in this video, there's probably going to be one for you. So without further ado, it's time to transform that purse into something looking a little bit healthier. Now first of all we start off relatively accessible and early game. That's not to say that later game players can't farm, but I'd say there could be better options. Depending on what you farm, there's a few different aspects that will determine how many coins you make. First of all is your farming fortune, and then for certain crops such as pumpkin and melon, there is actually an RNG aspect. Well I guess in a way there's actually an RNG aspect to pretty much every crop, considering drops like croppies, squash, or fermentos are all able to drop from individual crops. As you can see here, a single fermento is 250k, which is quite a sizable increase to your profits. Four of these an hour, and that's an extra million coins. If you're farming mushroom, then you also have a chance at dropping a burrow in spores, which is another 8 million coins. So your farming fortune is going to boost your base profits, but there is a decent amount of RNG involved in farming, believe it or not. I farm and I'm on profile, and I have around about 1000 farming fortune, and I can quite comfortably get around about 8 million coins per hour. That basically means that if you have, for instance, 1500 farming fortune, then you can probably quite easily make 12 mil an hour, probably 12 to 15, depending on how good your RNG is. For the next money making method, we stay on the garden. But you might not want to stay on your regular profile. That's right, every time there's a new month in real life, the first week, the first seven days, is bingo. For those of you who don't know, bingo is basically what it says on the tin. Um, a new profile is created for yourself, you have a bingo card and you try to check off as many things as you possibly can. There'll be multiple challenges and it also it almost acts like an Iman profile, whereby you can't trade on the bazaar or the AH. Now, if you're willing to forfeit a bit of bingo progression, maybe if you don't regularly do bingo anyway, then this money making method is going to be a good one for yourself. You see, the reason why it's so useful to have a new profile, and a bingo profile is useful because we will, we'll, we'll get on to that in just a little bit. When you're on a new profile on the garden, you have no visitors unlocked. That means that basically nobody can visit you, because if you recall, you have to actually talk to NPCs for them to be able to visit you in the garden. The most profitable thing you can possibly get from the garden realistically is a dedication for book, which will actually bag you 126 million coins at the moment. But how do you get this book? Well, you have to speak to the librarian in the hub. Once you've spoken to the librarian, the librarian then has a chance to visit your island. And Dedication 4 is a book that has a chance to actually drop when you speak to the librarian when he visits your garden. So, now we need to figure out how we can basically harvest the librarian's goods most efficiently. Now as I mentioned before, you have to talk to NPCs in order for them to visit your garden. So on this bingo profile, if you only talk to the librarian, and I must stress this, only talk to the librarian, otherwise it's just not as efficient, you'll basically get a situation where you just accept the librarian every single time and he will basically just keep visiting, visiting, visitor after visitor. You get an endless stream of librarians, which means you have a really, really high chance of getting more, many, many more dedication falls much quicker than if you didn't. For instance, if you had to wait for him and there was a, a pool of 50 visitors that could potentially come. You know, the odds of him actually coming is not very high. And then the odds of him dropping the book isn't ridiculously high. But if you can have a if you can make it into a situation where he visits pretty much every time, then um, you've got a pretty good chance of getting this dedication for book and relatively high amount of times. Now the reason why I'm telling you to do this on a bingo profile or not just a regular second profile is because if you basically make a bunch of coins on a second profile and transfer them to your main profile, then that is account boosting. You're not allowed to do that. In theory, you could actually even get banned for that. Whereas on a bingo profile, you can transfer 10 items over to your main profile before the bingo profile gets deleted, as it does after the end of the bingo, after the 7 days. Which means in theory, if you actually stick this out, you could get 10 of these dedication 4 books, bring them back to your main profile and sell them on the bazaar for 1.3 billion coins. If you don't have many coins, then I'd say this is definitely worth a try, considering the setup to actually get this working probably takes about 30 minutes. I would just recommend farming sugarcane because that is pretty much all the only thing that the librarian ever requests. And that's it. Anyway, before we go any further, if you are planning on purchasing anything from the Hypixel store, make sure to use code NITROS, it gets yourself 5% off. Also, please subscribe to the channel, it does help out a lot. And you should join the Discord server, it's linked in the description of this video. We offer slayers and dungeon carries, so if you want to carry, or maybe, maybe even get carried, then make sure to join the server. More on that next. It's no secret that Enderman Slayer can make you a lot of coins. 
The main item landing you a lot of profit being the Judgment Core, selling for around about 375 million coins. The chances of dropping said Judgment Core is around about 1 in 1770, so it's not really a reliable thing to make money from. After all, there is an RNG meter there for a reason. If there wasn't an RNG meter, then it could be perceivable that some people would just never drop it. Further showing how rare it really is. But there's kind of a better way that you can make money from Enderman Slayer. And that, of course, still requires you to kill bosses. But what if you could get paid for killing bosses? A lot of people need to complete Enderman Slayer to get either a Juju Shortbow or a Terminator, but either are too lazy to do their own bosses, um, or just want to pay for somebody to carry through. Selling Eman carries is a very, very lucrative business. And there's many different ways you can go about it. You can hop from lobby to lobby in the end, advertising your services, although it's not very reliable. And um, disputes are pretty prone to happen. Now, the only other option you really have is to turn to Discord servers. For instance, in my Discord server, which is linked in the description of this video, um, each Enderman Slayer carry is 2.5 million per, or 2 million in bulk. So, once again, you can kind of see how you can make a lot of coins from this. There's many other servers out there, it's not just my own. However, realistically, going through a Discord server is going to be the most reliable and safest way to actually offer your services. I'll make it known that you can carry multiple people at once. Once again, the speed of your bosses, i.e. your profits, kind of... Um, almost to an extent rely on people being able to spawn the bosses relatively quickly and not die during the boss. Nevertheless, uh, good efficiency, you could be making around about 40 to 50 million coins per hour. Carries for dungeons can also make a lot of coins, notably floor 7 and master mode. Honestly, carries may be something you should look into if, you make, if you're looking to make some extra coins and you already enjoy doing slayers or dungeons. Next up we have mining in the almighty crystal hollows. Many different factors affect your profits while mining gemstones. First of all, the type of gemstone that you're mining. Second of all, your Heart of the Mountain tier, because of course this kind of allows you to purchase different items and actually be able to use them. And of course you need powder to actually utilise your Heart of the Mountain tree, i.e. the more powder you have in an essence, the more efficient and more profit you're going to make from mining. Well, the factors of course massively impact how many coins you can potentially make. For example, if coal is a mayor and there's a mining fiesta, you're going to be able to make a lot more coins. It's important to know that when mining, the higher pristine you can get, essentially the more coins you're going to make. Pristine essentially increases the chances for the gemstones that you drop to be increased in quality. You can surely see why this is a very important factor. With good gear under the right circumstances, i.e. within a fiesta, potentially striking a jackpot of finding Jasper, um, you could potentially be making over 100 million coins per hour. Is that reality for most people majority of the time? Absolutely not. The thing is, um, even though mining seems pretty straightforward and relatively two-dimensional, it's not. It's actually quite complex. There's so many different variables and, and essential things that could happen um, that it's not so straightforward. What I will also say is just because um, you have good gear doesn't mean that you're going to make a lot of coins. Mining gemstones requires you to actually know what to do, and the majority of the time I also have de decent mods. There's a lot of factors. But while we're on the topic of mining, there's also something else that I want to mention. For instance, you see these amethyst gemstones right here. Well, you see, um, when I, if, I, if I was to mine these gemstones, they would respawn. They reset on the timer, and if any of them are, are missing, they'll be replaced in exactly the same formation in the same location. And the great thing about this is this is consistent throughout the Crimson Isles. So for instance, this is just complete hypothetical. This is just an example. If I was like, okay, well, I want to mine amethyst gemstones. Um, what you then really need to do is set up a route between all the gemstones. So, um, for instance, from getting to this gemstone to this gemstone, obviously you just walk straight across this path. But of course there's going to be gemstones hidden within this wall. So in order to mine these gemstones efficiently and actually make a lot of coins, you can basically set up a route or a path whereby you will just mine from here to the next gemstone and then from there to the next gemstone to the next gemstone to the next gemstone. Mods can help you do this. And this is why there's so much setup involved in mining, because it's not just straightforward to sit down and mine. But it can be if somebody else makes the route for you. Well, this is where you can make some coins. Potentially, if you were to just set routes up for people, mining between gemstones and, and gemstone, warping them into the lobby, they pay you a sum of money for the route so they don't have to do the hard labour, so they can literally just sit down and mine. Well, yes, this is an actual thing, and depending on the quality of the route, and I guess the person that you're actually selling to, you can make between 20 to 50 million coins per route. Know that, I guess once you've actually started doing this for a while and you have more experience, you're going to be able to create better routes. Therefore, they're going to be more efficient. You can build up a, like a bit of a reputation for yourself and therefore be able to charge more coins. It's an interesting way of looking at making money um, in the crystal holes and mining, but it's definitely viable. 
Okay, on to the next method, and for this method, we're in the Dwarven Mines, not the Crystal Hulls. And funnily enough, we're not even going to be mining. This is a combat-related money-making method. I'm sure you would have all gazed over this cliff and seen just like a hazy, misty... What looks almost a bit icy? I don't know. Uh, down here we have ghosts, and these ghosts drop items. The item that realistically you want to look for when killing these ghosts is the Sorrow. Each Sorrow sells for just shy of 500,000 coins. Now, uh, these mobs, these ghosts, have 1 million HP. So that means that you need to deal 1 million HP to them. And to grind them efficiently, you want to be one-tapping them. So realistically, in one hit, you really need to deal 1 million uh, damage in order to kill these efficiently. 1 million damage is quite hefty, so how do you do that? Well, the easiest way is to buy a set of Crimson Armor, because Crimson has a swipe ability. Uh, when you have 10 stacks, once you've built up a bit of a combo on these ghosts, um, your Crimson Armor will start to basically double hit, meaning that realistically to kill these ghosts, you might only need to deal around about 550k damage in one hit, and basically then just let your Crimson Armor take over and deal the rest of the damage. Now, grinding ghosts is relatively dependent on your magic find. At the end of the day, it's an RNG drop, so there is a chance that you have zero magic find and make 50 million coins per hour. There's also a chance that you have 300 magic find and make 2 million coins per hour. But for the most part, the more magic find you have, the more of these sorrows you're going to drop and the more coins you're going to make. Now, these sorrows give you great combat XP, which brings me on to the next money making method. And that is leveling pets. Now, ghost is a great way to level pets just because, like I said, they give you a ton of combat XP. If you're able to get an attribute like veteran on your equipment or your armor as well, this means that you'll gain even more combat XP per kill. If you put champion on your weapon, get enough kills and level it up to 10, then that's going to basically bag you even more combat XP, meaning that your pets are going to level evil qu even quicker. If we take a look at the price of a level 1 golden dragon, it's 606 million coins. At level 100, you can sell this for 696 million coins, meaning that you'll make about 90 million coins profit. However, what I would recommend is buy a pet at level 100, make sure it doesn't have pet candies on because that's not going to be good, and then level it to 200. At level 200, um... A level 200 golden dragon is 1.12 billion coins meaning that if you leveled it from level 100 to level 200 you're going to make around about 420 million coins profit and you might think that leveling a golden dragon to level 200 is daunting and it is a decent amount of xp however you'll be happy to know that after level 100 the amount of xp that you actually need to get it to the next level stays consistent it doesn't increase it stays at about 1.8 is it 1.8 million or so somewhere around that mark 1.8 million per level so if you're going to be doing a combat related money making method, maybe like ghosts, then maybe you should try this at the same time as it's more passive money. If you don't have enough coins for a golden dragon, then potentially you could buy something like a zombie pet. The cheapest one is 4.8 million coins at legendary. And at level 100, it's selling for 45 mil, meaning that you'll make 40 mil profit, which is really quite decent. Next up, we have AH flipping. Something that I have done a lot in my time playing Skybox, probably where I have most of my hours on the game, if I'm being honest, although I've not done it for a while, but I still know what to do. AH flipping is simple, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can either look for buy it now, things to buy, buy them when they're cheap, and sell them when they're high. You look for bargains, it's as simple as that. You can also maybe look at auctions only, but I really don't think it's very efficient if I'm being completely honest. So there's a few very important things to know when you're AH flipping. Number one, you need to know when to move on. If you buy an item and it's not selling, sometimes you need to cut your losses. It's not worth the time that your money's tied up in the auction house, sell it for a loss and move on. At the same time, it sounds contradictory, but at the same time, sometimes you need to have patience. If you know an item that you've bought isn't going to sell straight away, then don't get a bit, you know, aggravated. Usually it's more expensive items that this happens to anyway, but sometimes you need to give items patience. If you can see that you've been undercut and maybe yours isn't selling and it's not sold for a while, then at the same time, you know, you've got money tied up in the auction house that you can't flip with anyway, so it's kind of wasted. Time is money and if you're wasting time, you're losing money. So there's a few different things to look at, um, and that's basically just popular items are best because they sell relatively frequently. Things like golden necron heads, giant swords, shadow furies and so on. You can flip pretty much anything in the game, but it's not really up to me to tell you what to flip, because if I do then everyone's going to flip it. It's all about trial and error, you need to get an understanding for the market yourself and see what flips work for you and what don't work. You need to be really careful and account for the taxes and fees that you're going to pay on pretty much all the things that you're going to be selling because sometimes something that looks like a good flip isn't a great flip when you factor in the fact that you're going to lose about 3.5% if it's a relatively expensive item. 
Now, within auction house flipping, there's something a little bit more niche that is interesting to look at. Now, of course, we don't like the Crimson pieces and Aurora pieces and all of the Crimson Isles pieces of armor. Um, they have attributes on there. So, for instance, if we take a look at the best possible Aurora chest plate you can buy off the auction house, which is a 1010 mana pool mana regen Aurora chest plate, currently selling for 940 million coins. Now, the cheapest mana pool mana regeneration Aurora chest plate is 225 million coins. That's mana pool 3, mana regeneration 3. Well, how much would it actually cost if you upgraded this chest plate from mana pool mana regen 3 to mana pool mana regen 10? And is the profit to be made if you were then to sell it on? So to upgrade this Mana Pool Mana Regen 3 Aurora Chest Plate all the way to Mana Pool Mana Regen 10, um, what we'd actually need is 538 pieces of Mana Regeneration 1 and 538 pieces of Mana Pool 1. Um, so let's see how much that would cost. So the cheapest piece of Mana Pool 1 on the market is 700k. So if we do 538 times by 700,000... I've completely messed it up. That would cost us 376 mil. And the cheapest mana, mana regeneration one at the moment is 700k too. I do think this is a bit expensive, but we'll calculate it anyway. So at the moment, it would cost us 752 mil to actually upgrade our mana regen mana pool 3, Aurora chest plate to mana pool mana regen 10. Meaning that at the moment, it would actually be a loss. Um, but majority of the time, this is not the case. This wasn't a great example. Well, that's just an example of the sort of calculation that you could do. I mean, that would be very extreme. It would take you a long time to actually um, pull that together too. But you don't need to take it to 10-10. A lot of the time, it's much more profitable if you take it to something like 6-6 or 7-7. And you don't have to do this with Aurora. You can do it with other decent like roles on pieces of armor, like Veteran Vitality, um, on Crimson or Terror. It's not amazing, but people do buy it. There's many other roles that are relatively desirable too. Anyway, now moving on to lowballing. So, if we go to hub 1, let's, um, server is full. Okay, let's go to hub 2. And all we have to do is wait. We just have to wait like 2 seconds and we see lowballing with 1.2 billion purse. Visit me. So, we're going to go ahead and visit this guy. Here we go. We observe a lowballer. Um, cool. So, basically what lowballing is, is there'll be put someone who advertises that they're lowballing, of course. Um... And then they will get people to come to their island and sell them things that they want to sell. The reason why people actually do this rather than selling on the AH is because, number one, they get to sell their items really quickly and avoid paying auction house tax and fees. The lowballer does this because they will offer them a price lower than market value, therefore selling it and making profit. If you're familiar with debt factoring in real life, it's not debt factoring, but it's somewhat similar. Basically, the lowballer is... Um, paying a fee, well, not paying a fee, but he's getting more more profit for taking on the liability of having to list an item that might take a while to sell. That's essentially it. Of course, the profitability of this is completely dependent on what items and what people actually come with, what items and how well they're willing to accept for a certain item. It's as simple as that. If you've not tried it, it's not a bad method, although I would just be careful because a lot of the time people get muted for spamming lowballing stuff in chat. That's all I'd say. So, the last three money-making methods of the video bring us to the Crimson Isles. The first one I'm going to talk about is Blaze Slayer. Blaze Slayer being one of the newest main slayers. Of course, we have Vampire Slayer, which is even newer, but Blaze Slayer is, you know, in the correct dimension. Now, how to do Blaze Slayer is another question. It's not really as difficult as you would think, and it's not really as expensive as you would think either, unless you go for something like a Tier 3 Dagger. Then you're going to be paying a lot of coins. However, what's really important to look at is the Tier 4 Blade Slayer and take a look at the drop chances of certain items that you can actually get. For instance, there is a bunch of items here that will make you profit. Well, not profit, at least make you break even from a boss straight away. Majority of the bosses break even, simple as that, because of the high chances of relatively expensive items to drop. Then you've got the more RNG items, such as things like um, a high class dice, which at 0.25% is still a relatively high chance. Things like a duplex book, a 1.77% chance, which is ridiculously high for what it is. Each duplex book selling for around about 7.7 .7 million coins and having around about a 1 in 50 drop chance, which for that item is actually really, really, really good. It's in your favour. A high class dice is 38 million coins and that's got around about a 1 in 400 drop chance. Once again, if you compare this to other slayers, it's considerably easier to get expensive items. Granted, it's not as easy and not as beginner friendly as something like Sven's or Rev's, but it will pay off. The next money making method is Kudra. Now, Kudra, like majority of things in Skyblock, is mainly RNG based. You have five tiers of Kudra, 
each tier requiring more reputation to enter, and each tier basically giving you better loot. Each run, if you use a key to open the chest, guarantees you a certain amount of essence depending on the tier, which in a lot of cases puts you a long way to actually breaking even from that key. I recently made a video about a month ago about tier 3 Kudra, and I think I ended up making around about 35 million coins per hour. Just a few days ago, I made a video about tier 4 Kudra, and I ended up making 92 million coins per hour. Granted, both of these were pretty lucky, but this is the sort of money that you can make, before even touching Infernal, which will make you even more. And to be completely honest, tier 3 and tier 4, given somewhat of a competent party, is not that difficult. Believe me, okay, I still skill issue sometimes, and I'm not good at Skyblock, I can admit that, but I can hold my own. And if I can hold my own in something that is feared like Kudra, then so can you, as long as you just have the basic gear. And unfortunately, the basic gear for tier 3 and tier 4 Kudra is not exactly the easy stuff to get. Depending on the role that you play, if you're crowd control, you're going to need a high period and probably a pretty decent set of Aurora. So that's a very expensive option. To DPS, you're going to need a Terminator. A lot of people want you to have two, but one will do. Definitely for tier 3 anyway. And then to stun, you're going to need some sort of mining device, whether that be a gauntlet or a drill. So there are your options, but what I will say is it's definitely worth doing. Even just for the bestiary and the skyblock XP for the completions, honestly, it's quite enjoyable. And the last method, we stay in the Crimson Isles. So pretty much everything that you kill within the Crimson Isles, you're going to get a drop. And that drop is going to be Corp Soulbound, meaning that you can't just buy that drop off the Bazaar or the AH. It's something that you or your Corp members will have actually have to have grinded to get. That said, that means that the items that you actually craft with those items are going to be quite expensive because they're not items that you can buy the materials to craft. You can buy parts of the materials, but you can't buy all of it and the main ingredients you'll have to grind. For instance, from killing the Barbarian Duke, you'll earn Leather Cloth. Leather Cloth is used to craft a Gauntlet of Contagion. Each Gauntlet of Contagion requires you to actually have 36 Leather Cloth and then Enchanted Mycelium Cubes, which you can buy from the Bazaar. But of course, you can't buy the Leather Cloth from the Bazaar or the AH. You have to grind this yourself. Hence why the Gauntlet of Contagion is pretty expensive. The cheapest Gauntlet of Contagion is 9.5 million. Something you have to consider is the Gauntlet of Contagion actually has attributes on it too. So if you get lucky and roll some good attributes, you could be making upwards of maybe 50 million coins. Never mind, <laughs> Manipul Manor region is 113 mil. And if you get lucky, you could simply get that just from grinding some mini bosses for a while. Uh, it's passive income. Uh, at the minimum, you're going to make 9.5 mil. Um, so it's not really bad. I wouldn't say it's the greatest main money making method in the world, relying on that much luck. But at the same time, like I said, if you're going to be grinding these mini bosses anyway, whether it's for reputation or for keys or whatever it is, then it's not a bad passive money maker. Like I said, majority of the mobs that you can grind in the Crimson Isles will grant you these Corp Soulbound items that can be crafted into things that you can sell for a decent amount of profit. Another example is when grinding flares, if you're looking to try and get some Vanquishers, maybe to grind some keys to do some Kudra, you're going to get a lot of drops. The Soulbound drops that you're going to get are these Gazing Pearls. At first, I really didn't know what to do with them. But if we actually right-click, we can see that they actually um, craft these shiny prisms. Each shiny prism is going to require you to buy 80 glowstone dust. That's going to set you back 148k. And each shiny prism sells for 242k. I was apprehensive as to whether these would actually sell, so I tried it out for myself. And after not long, I think I listed about 10, and they were all, they all sold. So um, it's not the greatest money-making method in the world, but... What else are you going to do with these gazing pearls? You can sell them, make around about 100k per 10, which means per stack you're probably going to make around 600 to 650k um, of items that you don't really, I mean, you don't, can't really do anything with these anyway, so it's not bad. What I would say is people make the mistake of selling these corpse orban items to the NPC because they don't sell to the bazaar. Trust me, that's not a good idea because you're going to need them in the future and you're going to have to grind things up again. Anyway, that's just about all I've got time for today. I hope some, if not maybe even just one of these methods has helped you out. If they have though, make sure you do leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.